Welcome to the final, 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 final part of The Last of Us Part 2. Ellie's still on her mission to kill Abby or rescue her. God knows what's going to happen at this point. But more importantly, who the fuck are these guys? Where'd they come from? Why are they here? And why are they important to the plotline all of a sudden? Well, these guys are the Rattlers. We don't know where they came from. We don't know why they're here. And I'm not even sure if they are relevant to the story other than they just captured Ab Abby and Lev. <laughs> They're just here. The only good thing about the Rattlers is that they drop ammo for Ellie's ultimate weapon. The Silence MP5. The MP5 is a fully automatic submachine gun. It's very inaccurate from afar, but if you're close to the enemy, its fire rate will more than make up for its inaccuracy. Yeah, these guys are not good. They are pretty much the most evil thing in this whole entire game. And you're gonna see why in a little bit, because these guys are fucked. <laughs> they are something else. So, anybody played Dead Rising lately? I know that's completely off topic, but I have nothing really to say yet. And this game and the last... This game and the last of us. I am playing the last of us, damn it. This game and Dead Rising both have some things in common, like zombies and shit, so why not? I love Dead Rising. That series is fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, in one of the games, you can literally dress up as Mega Man with the arm cannon and everything. <laughs> and it's just about as stupid as it looks. And I'll settle for stupid over-the-top shenanigans as opposed to dreary over-the-top shenanigans with this game. The Last of Us Part 1 was a middle ground of that. I mean, sure, it was mostly serious for the most part, but there were moments where the characters just jump off a bridge and survive because of course they can. <laughs> or better yet, Bill, the character Bill, <laughs> in general. I am still sad that he was not in this game, like seriously. Come on, come on, Naughty Dog. He was the best part of the first game. I know the story takes place mostly on the west coast and Bill's located in Massachusetts, but it still kind of sucks to not see him get at least a cameo. I forgot to mention this, but the Rattlers have dogs, just like the WLF. Are you sure these guys are not just the WLF, but, you know, Renegade or something? These dogs, however, are tougher than the wolf dogs because they wear bulletproof vests, so it may take two to three shots to actually drop them. The same goes for the human characters too. Not only are they wearing body armor, but they're also wearing the shielded face masks, so you have to take them out another way. Oddly enough, if you headshoot somebody with a bow and arrow, you can instantly kill them regardless of whether or not they're wearing the riot helmet, whereas if you do it with a bullet, it may take two to three shots. Damn right you got nothing. Aw, oh, crap. The grass had to run out here? <laughs> this is the problem with the later portions of this section. There's no grass anywhere here. So I'm gonna need to throw out the smoke here. They want the smoke, they got it. Bunch of bastards. <laughs> okay, the smoke actually worked. I didn't get shot yet. I took a shot there, but it was more like a graze wound and I'm still moving. Okay, I'm literally at the exit. I just need these guys off my back. Oh wait, she's at the door. Stop shooting. You guys suck at your jobs. You can't even defend a freaking cargo train door for shit. Oh, get out of here. You just let an injured woman through a heavily guarded area. There's no need to sound threatening now. <laughs> That looks 
looks like a tall round building. How do I get in there? This next area is hard to describe. You got infected with the rattlers and <laughs> The Rattlers idiotically tie up the infected and play music to set them off. Big brain moment right there. How this group managed to survive the apocalypse is truly amazing because Ellie freaking takes them out. <laughs> and she's just one person. Okay, maybe she's not solely responsible for the Rattlers' downfall, but she takes out a good chunk of them. You know what? Let me give Anthony a hand. Yes, Anthony, take your revenge on that guy who was doing stuff to you. I don't even know what he was doing. He was just being a dick. But you can unleash the infected onto the Rattlers, and it's so satisfying to do. It's a crapshoot on whether or not the infected is actually going to take somebody out because the Rattlers have guns and melee weapons and stuff. But it's good for a distraction at least. This area right here you can just completely bypass. There's only a fair few of people here, maybe five or six. But you can just bypass them all and they're kind of a pain to deal with. This section right here is a bit more difficult to bypass without getting detected. You may have to go in loud for this one. Damn right, Ellie. Now, there's one runner and two clickers that are tied up here. Use them to your advantage. And you can shoot the chains too. There's two ways to unleash the infected. By shooting the chains or just unchaining them normally. It does make a slight ping sound whenever you shoot the chain. But the music playing in the background will always drown that out. The goal is to get to the other side of this yard. There will be rattlers on the balconies and you need them out of the way. Time to set you free. Now, the stupidest thing happens here. I go to this area right here, and it turns out the thing that I kill was the infected that I just set free. <laughs> I thought it was a rattler. It seriously went the other way. Why did that runner just circle around the building just to get to where I was at? Especially with that rattler there. Stealth in this section is pretty much a test and inevitability. You will get spotted eventually because there's just so many eyes on the field. And it looks like I cleared the downstairs. Nice. Uh, well, maybe not. There's somebody down here, apparently. Somewhere. Or maybe that was somebody from the balconies? I'm not sure where they're at. Anyway, I kind of want to get these infected unleashed so that I can create a distraction here. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, no. That's... Going up to that chain is probably not smart. 
Those are clickers, and getting grabbed by clickers as Ellie means an instant death. Oh, and this guy just sucks at shooting. He's not even hitting center mass right now. The infected probably hurt me killing that guy, so they're going to chase me around a bit. How are the infected still on my ass? Focus on the rattlers, please! Okay, it looks like one of them split off, but this other one... Oh my god, do I have to kill this thing? No? Okay, maybe you lost me. Get me out of here, I just want to move on. Looks like the rattlers are distracted with one infected right now, which is good, but I need them distracted with both infected. Time to embrace my inner Oliver Queen with a bow and arrow. I mentioned earlier that you can actually instantly kill everybody here with a headshot, despite them wearing helmets. And the sound it makes whenever you do get a headshot. That glass shattering is like music to my ears. Shot. Now, I don't know how many people are still left in this area, but I gotta get a move on. I don't want to get stuck here for another 10 minutes. I do like the cat and mouse aspect of the gameplay. You know, slithering through grass, just sneaking up on enemies. But sometimes it's just quicker to, you know, be quicker and just abandon the situation altogether. Or use distractions. This game kind of reminds me of Splinter Cell... Blacklist? It was the very last Splinter Cell game that Ubisoft ever made, and that was kind of unfortunate because Splinter Cell was a really good series, and they need to bring that back, goddammit. But this game reminds me of that game in that there's a bunch of different ways to take out enemies. That being either stealth or all-out combat. Or just being, in, just being a total prick and just messing with the enemies for the fun of it. Splinter Cell, however, did that formula better, despite it being a game from 2013, because the enemies actually felt like they were smart, and these enemies are really dumb. Like, right there, what the fuck was she doing? <laughs> Something explodes behind her, she just stops, and then I run towards her, and she's still just standing there. <laughs> okay then, well, whatever floats your boat, lady. Let's see, do I want the explosive arrows, or do I just want the regular arrows to not draw attention? You know what, I think I'll just go with the regular arrows for now. Thought I saw her. Let's go see what's up. Oh, I messed up the headshot. Looks like Ellie cannot be a future Hawkeye after all. But she's still the expert of stabbing people in the face. This isn't the suggested way to get around these goons, but at least it's working, somehow. Oh, get off me, you ain't got shit on Ellie. She actually remembers that she has a knife this time around, so dick stab. No, okay, that was the gut, but I'll call it a dick stab for right now. It's not too far off though, I'm still stabbing a dick, just not in the dick itself. Damn, that glass sound is so satisfying. The sound direction in this game is just A+. I think there's one more guy around here somewhere. I'm not sure if this is one of the spots where enemies just respawn out of nowhere, but there should be at least one or two guys here. There's somebody. It looks like he's just got a fire axe too, so he's pretty much a joke. Dude, fire axes have got to be the most impractical weapons of all time because they're heavy and it's hard to swing with. All right. 
that's this area we got one more combat section to go and it's a kind of a short combat section if I do say so myself however they're tightly packed together so I might have to use some Molotovs and some smoke grenades for this one And they're already on high alert. Actually, I think they'll always be on high alert whether or not you use stealth. The strategy for this section is just pure aggression. I mean, it is the last section of the game, so I pretty much just waste everything here. <laughs> You're not going to carry this stuff over to The Last of Us Part 3. I hope not. <laughs> so just use everything to your advantage here. Oh, you guys set yourselves up for this one. Two for one shotgun blast and an axe to the chest. Oh, that guy just survived the shotgun blast, so I just gave him the axe anyway. Oh shit, that guy's got a shotgun too. Oh, his shotgun is lame. Mine's is better, even though I didn't even use my shotgun. <laughs> it would have been a good shotgun versus shotgun fight, but no, I just bottled him to death. Anyway, here's the hallway to the final boss. Final boss in quotations because this isn't really a boss. Probably already dead. Come on. Yes, we're on our way to Abby, and oh, oh wow, the screen just lit up for no reason. <laughs> okay, something weird about this game, the transitions from cutscene to gameplay. Whenever it goes to cutscene, there's a film grain around the image, and I can't understand why. I mean, it's seamless transition from cutscene to gameplay, but it just adds that film grain for some reason, and it's just distracting. Karma's indeed a bitch for the Rattlers. The whole facility is already on fire and it's only been two minutes. Jesus Christ, what the hell is going on in there? I honestly don't even want to know. Let's just get to Abby and finish this game because it's gone on for far too long. Here's some freakishly disturbing symbolic imagery right here. Um, yeah, Abby's going to be somewhere on these pillars. Abby?
I won't blame you if you think that Ellie's going to actually help Abby here. Because, let's face it, it's Ellie and she's going to try to goat Abby into a fight somehow. And how Ellie provokes Abby into fighting her kind of goes against Ellie's character. The character that was established in the first game. And even parts of this game, too. I have a problem with Ellie holding a knife to Luff's throat because I I just don't see that in her character. She would never threaten a 13 or 14 year old to get somebody else to fight. That just goes against everything she believes in. And even if it was just a bluff and Ellie had no true intentions of killing Love, then that's just a really lame way to have Abby fight. And what happens if you kill Abby? Then Lev dies unless Ellie's gonna take Lev and oh my god, everything is weird here. Everything is fucked, we're in Bizarre World, hamsters are running on the ceiling. Anyway, this boss fight, quote unquote boss fight, is um, it's just a slap fight between Ellie and Abby, that's about it. You have to time your dodges well and your attacks well. If anything, I could compare this to the Pikachu versus Pikachu slap fight from one of the Pokemon movies. I, <laughs> I don't know why that came up, but... I, I just got Pikachu on the mind for some reason. And I don't know, I never tried it, but I don't think you can die in this section. So is it really a final boss or is it just a quick time event? Nobody knows, I haven't tried to die, and if you do somehow manage to die, then congratulations, you're a famous game tester. Or maybe you were just too bored and want this game to end. Here's phase two of the boss fight. If this boss fight even have phases, uh, let me just put it like this. Ellie lost her knife and now she's fighting bare knuckle. You know, like it's actually a fair fight now. And Abby is still just as easy as she was before. I will give this game credit for even having a final boss whereas the first game did not, but there are still some flaws. If they're gonna make a third game then there are probably gonna be five rat kings in one room and you have to survive with a knife. That's it. That may sound like a really insane challenge run, but I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog's gonna pull shit like that in the next game. 
Ellie cannot fight for shit. Those wild haymaker punches, you're actually not supposed to do in real life. Unless you get a window of opportunity to do that. But otherwise, you're supposed to punch more straight. Ellie managed to survive this journey after all, so <laughs> we're still going to get that happy ending, right? Right?
drinking. Coffee. Where'd you get that? Uh, those people that came through last week. Oh. A little embarrassed as to what I had to trade to get it, but it's not bad. I had Seth under control. Yeah, I know. And you need to stop harassing Jesse about my patrols. Okay. Uh, Dina. Is she your girlfriend? No. No, she... That was just one kiss. It doesn't mean anything. She just... I don't know why she did that. But you do like her. <sighs> so stupid. I have no idea what that girl's intentions are, but... But I do know that she would be lucky to have you. You're such an asshole. I'm not trying to. I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. But you took that from me. Somehow, the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment. I would do it all over again. I think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. I like that.
No happy ending for you. You did all of that for almost nothing. <laughs> Which I will say, that is a pretty... I'm not going to say it's a good way to end a story, but it's different at least. There are some things about this game that are better than the first game, like the improved graphics, as well as the fact that you can actually go prone and jump now, and the better aiming. Uh, this game does have slightly better aiming, even though it's not much. And then there are just some bad things about this game, like the story, the narrative. Oh, this, the narrative is all over the place, and it's kind of dis disconcerting. I don't mind the sequel being darker and edgier. I mean, the first game already was pretty dark, so this was the next logical step. But it feels like the narrative itself gets lost in its own misery. And it's like, look at this, look at this destruction and pain you're causing. And it's like, uh, okay, but what does this serve to the narrative? Absolutely nothing. Oh. And not only is the narrative lost in misery, it's just lost. The Last of Us 2 is half of Ellie's story mixed in with half of Abby's story, which is where the lack of focus really shines, because the narrative does not know whether or not it's trying to be an anthology with different characters and, you know, almost a different setting, or whether or not it's trying to be the same universe, or, you know, the same story from the previous game with the same characters. You play as Ellie through the first 12 hours of the game, which is fine, and then you play as Abby through the second 12 hours, which is it, it's fine too, but it doesn't really need to be there, or if anything, that should have been saved for a third game, because it, that's when all the subplots start coming in with Isaac and the freaking scars, and everything starts to become bloated at that point. Huh, bloated, huh. But the story's problem is... Not that Abby's a bad person, not that Ellie's a bad person, it's just that there's just too many subplots in one game to begin with, and there could have been at least two or three more sequels to explain why the wolves are doing what they're doing, why the Scars are doing what they're doing. And also, the drama between Ellie and Joel, while justified to a point, I still don't think Ellie would have been mad at Joel for that long. I mean, sure, Joel did what he did to save Ellie and screwed humanity up doing it, but seeing as humanity is just the way that they are now in this game, they honestly don't deserve the cure. I think Joel kind of did the right thing. It may have been selfish, but objectively, <laughs> with the way the people act in this game, nope, no cure for you. Anyway, that's, um, that's my take on The Last of Us Part 2, and... Yeah, I really got nothing else to say for this game. I will see you in... Oh wait, I still got GTA 3 to finish, do I? Okay, I'll see you for the remainder of GTA 3 and whatever I'll do next.